In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make your own super accurate Mandalorian helmet out of EVA foam. Two years ago, I made this Mando helmet, but since then, my template making skills have gotten better, so I decided to make a new one. The templates for this helmet are available in my Etsy store, and you can find the link in the video description. To thank you for 10,000 subscribers, the templates will be at 80% off the first week after this video comes out. So go get your templates, and let's make this helmet. The first step is to print out your templates by following this tutorial video, which you can find the link for in the product description on Etsy. Once your templates are printed out, cut off the border around each page so that they line up properly. Next, lay the pages on a table and tape them together. After that, simply cut out each part on the template. This is a time-consuming step, but you'll get much more accurate parts by taking your time. Make sure you keep those two guides because you'll need them later. To transfer the templates to EVA foam, I like to pin them in place with sewing pins. After that, I trace around the parts with a silver sharpie. Make sure you also transfer the registration marks. For the lines that are inside the parts, you can take a sewing pin and make holes along the lines. They will be visible on the foam. After removing the template, trace the registration marks inside the part along with all the other details. You can also mark the parts with the letters which help you know which part goes where. I won't do it because I know how the helmet goes together. If there's a 2x logo on a part, it means you have to trace it, then flip it over and trace it again. The dome piece has that logo, so let's flip it and follow the same steps as before to trace it again. When a part has dashed lines, it means that this line is a 40 degree outward angle cut. Make sure you transfer those dashed lines. Dotted lines mean the opposite. The part needs a 40 degree inward angle cut on that line. Unfortunately, my silver sharpie ran out of ink, so I have to keep going with a black sharpie which is less visible. If a part has two numbers between parentheses, it means it's a part of a stack of pieces. Make sure you transfer the numbers on the foam. This part specifically has a 10 degree outward angle cut. You can indicate it on the foam. Make sure you draw in this U shape on this piece. And this tiny part can be easily lost, so make sure you have it traced down on your foam. With all of the 8, 5 and 2mm parts traced down, it's time to cut them out. I like to use a box cutter for mostly straight lines in thicker foam and a hobby knife for tight curves and thinner foam. Take your time when cutting out your parts because the cleaner and more accurate they are, the better your build is gonna look. To cut an outward angle part, angle your blade away from the part. After cutting it out, this is what you should end up with. For inward angle cuts, simply angle your blade towards the part. You should end up with something like this. Don't forget that these two parts have a 10 degree outward angle cut. Here's how my parts look. You have to remove the inside of this piece just like this. Do the same for those two parts. Those six parts should not be cut out yet. They are the dome trim piece, the two number three upper ear parts, the two millimeter rectangle at the back of the helmet, and the two millimeter number one lower ear parts. And the reason is you'll have to glue other parts to them before cutting them out. I applied contact cement on all the parts and glued them together carefully. Starting with the dome trim piece, you can cut out the thicker part after gluing it on the thinner one. Do the same for all the other parts. Make sure you don't cut out this little rectangle from the lower ear pieces. The dome trim piece needs recessed lines along its length. I added those by scoring halfway through the foam and heating up the cuts with a heat gun to open them. This part also needs angle sides and front. I used my rotary tool to sand down the edges into an angle. You can clean up the surface of the foam by heat sealing it. And this looks pretty good. You'll also have to round up the sides of this rectangular piece. This is the end result. Now let's glue the vent pieces into the frame. First, cut out two tiny rectangles and glue them in the lower corners of the frame. This will let the vent sit at an angle. After that, carefully stick down each vent using super glue. And the end result looks pretty clean. Here are all the parts for the upper ears. For now, only keep the number two parts. We have to add a slight angle around the sides and top. For that, I used my rotary tool and removed about half of the thickness of the foam. Here's a before and after. Those two parts need rounded edges which can also be done with the rotary tool. With that done, I quickly cleaned up the edges of the other parts and moved on to the assembly. 
All you need to do is to stack those pieces to end up with this. Start with parts 1 and 2. Make sure the top is inset by about 2mm but the sides sit flush. After cutting off the excess material and cleaning up the edges, glue on the next piece. A bit more cleanup and you can glue on the final part. Make sure the edges line up and give the finished upper ear piece a heat seal. This looks really nice. Moving on to the lower ear pieces, start by gluing in the 5mm rectangles in place. After that, separate the upper and lower parts. This will let you make the angled edges this part needs. To make them, start by removing some of the material with a box cutter and sand down the rest carefully with a rotary tool. After a quick heat seal, here are the finished parts. Finally, you can assemble the ear modules using contact cement. I have to say, I'm really happy with how they turned out. Moving on to the faceplate, it needs a recessed line along the top. I decided to use my wood burner for that. Make sure you practice on a scrap piece of foam first as this process is not easy. You can always send the line after carving it to make it a bit cleaner. After some heat sealing, here is the result. We now have all the parts required to assemble the helmet ready to go. Let's start off with the dome of the helmet which requires those three parts. To help the parts take a domed shape, I heat form them. Make sure you don't keep the heat gun in one spot for too long as it could burn the foam. With nice rounded parts ready to go, start by closing up the small and big darts on the two side pieces. After that, you can glue the trim piece on one of the halves. Make sure it sits flush with the inside of the helmet. This way it should protrude by the right amount on the outside. Finally, connect the remaining piece on and you should have a completed helmet dome. The next part is to attach the faceplate and it needs to sit at a 2mm step up from the other parts. The only place it needs to sit flush is on the bottom side edges. Start by attaching the center and move your way out. The part should be 2mm higher at the top, then slowly angle down until it's flush with the side pieces. Let's move on to the cheek pieces which should look like this. Simply carefully assemble them together following the registration marks. Finally attach them to the helmet which is finally taking shape. To make sure the cheeks and ears stay completely straight I decided to cut some pieces of corrugated plastic which I glued inside the helmet. I also added one to the back of the helmet afterwards. Now the helmet should properly keep its shape. It's time to attach the last parts which are the ear modules and back vent. They're easy enough to just stick on the helmet. Just take your time to make sure they're all straight. With that done, the Mandalorian's helmet is completely assembled. After a quick heat form to make the dome more rounded, we are done building this helmet. I'm really happy with not only the shape but also the accuracy of the details. I think this is pretty much as screen accurate as you could get with EVA foam. Before priming the helmet, we still need to hide the seams on the dome. It's just a matter of sanding down the seams with a low grit sanding stick. I have an orbital sander, so that's what I'm gonna use. After sanding down the seams, quickly heat seal them to reduce the texture. You can go over the seams with a medium grit of sandpaper to get them even smoother, followed by more heat sealing. A final pass with high grit sandpaper and more heat sealing should give you a very smooth surface. Now the seams are almost invisible. To make them disappear completely, I like to fill them with this Liquitex light modeling paste, which stays slightly flexible after drying. After applying the filler, you can smooth it out with water. After two coats of filler, you can sand down the seams with medium and high grit sandpaper. It's finally time to cut out the visor. This step is always scary because if you mess up, you have to start all over again. I was able to get a pretty clean result and I removed the imperfections with my rotary tool. To prime the helmet, I like to use Mod Podge. After applying one coat, I added grey acrylic paint and water to the Mod Podge and brushed on four more coats. The helmet looks pretty good but has some texture which you can mostly sand away. A good layer of automotive filler primer will remove most of the remaining texture. This red primer from Duplicolor works really well. Once the filler dries, comes once again more sanding. I like to use a gloss gray spray paint as a base for the graphite powder which will give the helmet a super reflective shine. I applied the powder with cotton balls because they won't scratch the paint finish. After applying the graphite you have to buff it in the paint with a clean cotton ball to get a nice reflective finish. Finally I cleaned the helmet with a microfiber towel before adding the clear coat. The line above the visor, the U shape on the upper ears and the rectangles on the lower earpieces need to be black. I used acrylic paint and a really small brush for that. 
to protect the graphite powder, I wanted to use Pledge for Gloss because it gave me a great result for my Mandalorian armor. Unfortunately, when the product dried, a bunch of weird lines appeared on the helmet. I think this might be because I had the floor gloss for over two years and it went bad or something like that. So I had to let the product dry completely and sand down the whole helmet. I decided to use this two-part clear coat for my new base coat. After spraying it on, I applied and buffed in graphite powder once again, which gave me a pretty good result. I decided to not take any chances and I didn't clear coat the helmet so I could finish it for this video. To weather the helmet, I used brown acrylic paint which I applied to the corners and low spots. You can remove the excess paint with a paper towel. The visor is made from a tinted welding shield from Amazon. I protected it with masking tape and traced the outline of the visor I cut out from the helmet earlier. After adding a border around the visor for the glue, you can cut it out with scissors. Then remove the tape on the border and sand the visor for the glue to stick better. Next, add contact cement to the visor and the inside of the helmet. Remove the masking tape and carefully glue in the visor. Here is the result. The last step is to add padding inside the helmet with upholstery foam. It cuts easily with a box cutter and you can glue it in the helmet with hot glue. With that done, you should have your very own all EVA foam Mandalorian helmet. Here is the finished product and I'm pretty pleased with it. It's unfortunate that I had issues with the clear coat on the graphite but I was able to finish the helmet anyway. Not clear coating your helmet is an option if you intend on not handling it too much. All you have to do is to buff the graphite really well for the next 3 days after applying it while the paint underneath dries completely. As long as you clean your hands before touching the helmet, the surface will stay intact. If you really want to clear coat your helmet, the best option I found is this 2K clear from Spraymax. Just make sure you wait at least 3 days after applying the graphite before you clear coat the helmet. But that's pretty much it. If you want to make this helmet yourself, the templates are available in my Etsy store, which is linked in the description below. Anyways, this is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, you can leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more cool builds like this one. And I'll see you next time. Bye.